All right, you guys. Um, welcome back to my channel if you have been here before. If not, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. So anytime that I'm on this dumb shit and I'm on some ranting, give my business to the world, you know, you can just be notified, I guess. <sighs> I don't know how I'm even going to start this. Hmm. Anyways, I have not been on here for a while. Um, sorry for my little Christmas blanket. It's kind of chilly in here. But um, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys, I guess, the tea of my life. And not really of my life, but um, just a section of it. Because um, I'm a really dumb individual, and I've gone through a lot of pretty much a lot of bullshit. So we're going to start from the greatest part of the bullshit. Um, so, if you don't know who I am, um, I go by Miracle. Um, that is actually my nip, my, my nip, my, my nipple. It's my nipple. I don't know where I was going with that. Um, uh, but no, it's my nickname, and that's pretty much, I don't know what I've been called my whole life. And it's very relevant to this story, so. Oh, shit. I guess this is really happening, huh? Okay, well. Fuck. Alright, you guys. Welcome to my channel. I'm just sitting here and talking to myself. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm done now. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the video with the Burger King rant, whatever. Um, I was supposed to, within you know, 24 hours, tell you guys my little sugar daddy stalker story, and I just could not get the balls to do it, um, because I'm like, okay, well, I know that once this is on here, you know, what if the person gets pissed off, and, you know, I'm not saying any names or anything, but, um, you know, what if they come for me, or, you know, whatever, they might come and just, like, break in my house, or, you know, get me, so... I'm at a hotel, you know, perfect time to make this video, because at least I know I'm safe. So, <coughs> um, we're kind of going to start by, um, ending my life here, you guys. No, but, um, okay, now I actually, for those who don't know me, um, I actually, I danced for about a year, and within that year, I thought it would be a great idea to accumulate sugar daddies. Not the best idea. Um, and for any of you girls that are out there, don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't fucking do it because they're all psychopaths and it's just not normal, okay? Not the wanting the money part is normal. But the people that you get the money from, it's not normal. They're not normal as much as they might act like it. They might put on a front or whatever like, oh, I'm Mr. fucking Mac Daddy and I can give you this and that and the fur coat and the fucking... The Gucci boots and don't worry bitch I got it but on the other end it's what are you gonna give me what am I gonna get on their end which some people aren't really like that but 98% of them are so we're going to get into a little bit of my life but I'm trying to smoke this cigarette without you guys seeing that I'm smoking a cigarette, but I've already put it in front of this camera so many times. Forget it. I need a cigarette for this video. Okay. Um, do not smoke. It's not worth it. You'll get cancer, lung cancer. You cough up black. It's fucking disgusting. Honestly, it's a habit I wish I never picked up, and I will be quitting soon. So, there you go. I'm not condoning it under any means, but I need one to tell you guys the story. Okay. Now, I was, I'm 23 now, and I was 
about 18 when I started dancing. Now, I don't know if I can, sorry guys, I'm an audience bitch, literally. But, um, okay. I mean, I'm going to put up a picture like right over here or something of when I was 18 years old. So, there's that. Now, I was, I was a feisty, you know, cute little thing. I mean, I think I'm still a cute little thing now, but we're not getting into that. Um, now, I was making a lot of money in the club, and I'm telling you, I was probably bringing home about, on a bad night, just to give you like an idea, on a bad night, I was making like $800. Now, on a good night, I was making anywhere between $1,200 to $1,600 a night. And it was a lot of money, especially for an 18-year-old. So, I thought I was bad and bougie, and I had my nails done all the time. I mean, my nails are done now. I'm not bougie anymore. I'm broke as a joke. I mean, not really, but, you know, I could still... You know, see my little Belgium rose and shit over here. Whatever. But, um, you know, I still take care of myself. I still, you know, can get what I like sometimes. And I don't know. Life is just a little bit different now that I'm not dealing with the crazy. Because in the beginning, it's the crazy. Okay, so I'm sorry. Hi, I talk so much shit. <laughs> I'm here, guys. Nice to meet you. Let me get on with the story now. Okay, um... So I was 18, I started dancing, I was making a lot of money, and I got so addicted to it. And I was like, I want more. I need more. I need more. I bought two cars. I bought a house. I need more money. I need more money. I need more money. I need more, 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 more. So I was like, ah, you know, like totally addicted to this fucking money part of my life, which kind of caused me to lose my marbles a little bit and I'm already kind of fucking batshit crazy. So I decided, okay, well I'm going to go on sugardaddy.com and I'm going to find myself a sugar daddy. Now, mind you, I already had like six sugar daddies at this point. Not from a sugardaddy.com. Ah, <sighs> gosh, here we go. So... Okay, so I ended up, you know, like, I'm a very um, respectable, like, have a big moral compass, you know, like, um, my whole life I was told, like, you sit on your shit, like, that's a gold mine, like, you sit on it for a reason. Um, ladies, if you are sitting down, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that's how it should stay. Um, no man should be able to pay. Uh, I'm not criticizing. People do what they have to, um, you know, to survive or to live or whatever. But me, personally, I feel like you can make more money not giving it up. Um, because that's kind of all anybody wants. And once you give that, it's kind of, you know, done. There's no working for it. I don't really know how to explain it. But, um, that's no criticism to the people that, you know, have to make a living for themselves or feed their kids or, you know, take care of themselves. But I had gotten on this website and at this point I was rolling in money. And I mean, I could get myself a Mercedes if I wanted to. Um, one of my cars was a $17,000 Kia Monte that I paid in cash. I mean, it broke down two days later, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And I actually had got it from a dealership, so I was pretty pissed off. Um, and there was no warranty, no nothing. Excuse me. If I'm boring myself and yawning, I know I'm surely boring the shit out of you guys. Okay, so... I go in there, and I'm like, alright, you know, I'm gonna fill this shit out. You know, I got Buku money. I got Buku sugar daddies already. What's another one? You know, and he legally has to show how much money he makes in order to be on this website. 
So I go in there and, you know, there's a couple hits. There's, you know, and they are like, make like six bands a year or, you know, so on and so forth. So I actually, I found somebody. Um, and I can't really say that the sugardaddy.com was where the stalker crazy sugar daddy came from. Um, I actually ended up meeting a really nice person. Um, they took good care of me for about, about a year and, um, you know, there was no issues. Now, one of my, actually all five of the sugar daddies I had, uh, they ended up like really getting possessive and very weird and very, I don't know, very stocky. And, um, like they, they would not leave me alone. And I mean like texting me 24 hours a day. Like they didn't sleep and I don't know how, or maybe they paid somebody to text me the whole time. I don't know. But like, I'm literally laying in bed one night and I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go to the supermarket, you know, like I can get what I want, you know, shit, I need a new camera. I need to get a laptop. So I'm like, I don't know. I just go ahead and go grab it. Like it shouldn't be an issue. Walmart's right down the street for me. So I go to get inside of my vehicle and mind you, this is about 10 o'clock at night. And it was a night that I was not working. So I actually had not been on my phone. I didn't text anybody all night. You know, I just kind of wanted some me time. So I went in there, um, you know, got dressed, whatever, got ready to go to Walmart. And I walk out of my front door. Well, then one of the sugar daddies actually, I'm going to call him, I'll call him Tom. Tom actually popped out of the bushes, like, as I turned my car on, and so my headlights were, like, right on this man, and all I could do was, like, scream, like, I didn't know what I was supposed to do, so I back out of my driveway really fast, and I haul ass, okay, now, at this point, I'm like, should I call the cops, or should I not call the cops, because he gives me good money, wrong choice call the fucking cops every time call the cops don't don't take a chance call the cops so I'm like all right you know like I'll, I'll leave it alone like I'm gonna text him and find out what's going on like why are you in my yard right now why did I just see you like what is going on like I was laying in my bed why are you around my house being creepy as fuck so as I'm texting I'm driving which you should not do. Don't ever do that. Um, there are, like, how you, like, turn on your brights, your high beams. High beams go on in the back of my, you know, in my rearview mirror. And I'm like, all right, you know, maybe someone's just telling me, okay, there's a cop up here. Or I have a tail light out or something like that. I didn't think that the man was going to get inside of his car and follow me. So now I'm in like a high speed chase with a sugar daddy, with somebody that just spends their money on me. Somebody that is just giving me money to go out to dinner or, um, you know, go to a fancy show or, you know, helping me with my bills or something like that. It did not dawn on me that I look over and this man is literally driving next to my car. So all I know is I book it. And I'm in a really nice car, you know, so it goes really fast. And um, I think it was actually... Um, it was actually a rental. Um, I forgot what kind of car it was. But it had, like, two, like, sunroofs or whatever. It was a really... I'll, I'll show a picture of it. Um, I'll put it up, like, right here. But it was a really nice car, it went really fast, and it was my shit, okay? Now, it can go really fast. So I book it, and I'm doing about 90. And now this is not on like some interstate road or anything like that. So the speed limit is like 45. So 
I am cruising and I am panicking and I'm freaking out. So I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going to happen. Like I call my mom and I'm like, listen, like I'm going to die. Like, I think this man's going to kill me. You know, I thought it was the end of my life. I didn't know what to do. So my mom's like, just chill, just relax. Like I'm going to call the cops and they're going to meet you at Walmart. And I'm like, um, well, he's going to pull up at Walmart before the cops are going to even get there because of how fast I'm going. So she's like, it's okay. Just, you know, keep driving around the parking lot, driving around the parking lot, driving around the parking lot. So I'm like, all right. So I hang up with my mom and I pull into Walmart. Now, like he goes past me. So I'm like, all right, you know, like, it's okay. Like call my mom back and I'm like listen like he went past like he honked his horn as he drove by me like this is it it's over whatever oh boy was I wrong and that was just the beginning so I'm like it's okay like tell the officer I'm fine like I appreciate it you know thank you so much um and we're gonna handle this tomorrow you know maybe go get an injunction or whatever so now I go down to, um, you know, I go down, I, I park and I get out of my vehicle and I'm walking up to Walmart. Here he comes as I'm going across the crosswalk to walk into the store doors. You know, there's the parking lot and then you have to cross the spot where the cars are driving back and forth to park and then you have the doors. As I go to walk across, he, like, I had no idea that this was him, but I hear, and, like, this car literally gets, like, this far from me. I shit you not, like, that far from me. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is just a crazy night. I shouldn't have left. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, something else is going to happen. You know, like, I don't Skype by a car. I got a stalker following me. Like, what is going on tonight? Like, God, what are you doing to me, you know? It was him. So, he hops out of the car, and he's like, I was just trying to give you this. I was just trying to give you this. And he comes out with, like, like some really expensive, like, um, like hair salon shampoo. And so I'm like a deer in headlights, legit. And I'm like, listen, like you're really freaking me out. Like I tried not calling the cops. I tried not doing this. You know, what is going on? Sorry, that's somebody texting me. But I'm like, what is going on right now? What am I supposed to do? I'm like, you know, what do you do in a situation like this? You call the cops and I'm like, and I'm trying so hard not to do that to you because you know I understand it might have been a long night you might have been drinking like but you gotta stop and he was like I I'm sorry I'm sorry but I, I just something inside of me like just made me like I I had to see you and I had to give you the shampoo and I'm like do you see what time it is like we've been we've been doing this for like an hour and a half already so you're telling me from me driving away from you and us being in like a high speed chase and I obviously wanted nothing to do with you like that to where I'm running away from you that you're going to chase me down you know like that doesn't make any sense at all like that's crazy and he's like I know it looks crazy but I'm not I'm not crazy I promise I'm not crazy I was like well then you need to take the shampoo put it in your car and you need to go home. I was like, because you're really freaking me out. I was like, and tomorrow I'll give you a call and you can bring me the shampoo. I was like, but don't, I don't appreciate you being in my bushes. I do not appreciate you following me to where I have to go 90 miles an hour and put my life in jeopardy. I do not appreciate you almost hitting me with your car and then running out at me and screaming like a crazy man that you want to hand me shampoo. You're like, what is going on here? And he's like, just let me go inside Walmart and let me buy what you need. And I, and I promise I got it. I got it. And maybe we can get you a diamond necklace and da 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 da. I'm pretty sure the jewelry counter is still open. And I was like, listen, away to my heart right now, 
is to leave me the fuck alone. Like, you got to go. I was like, or else I'm going to have to call the cops on you because right now you're freaking me the fuck out. And at this point, like, he smells, like, you can smell the alcohol coming out of his pores. So I'm like, this is not normal. This is not, this is a very dangerous man. You know, like, this is not okay. And me, I'm only a little 18-year-old, you know, me. <laughs> so I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to do, you know? So I walk into Walmart. He gets in his car, and he drives away. Now, I go into Walmart, and you know how they have, like, the intercoms or whatever? Um, like, when you lose your kid or... You know, you lose your sister or you can't find one of your friends or something in the store. And you're like, can you please call so-and-so over the intercom and tell them meet me over here at customer service or that I'm in front of the bathrooms or something like that. So I hear that go off and I'm like, damn it. Like, I was really enjoying that song. Like, I really needed to relax. Like, damn, that was a good song. It says, Miracle, can you please come up to counter blah, 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 blah. There's somebody waiting for you. I'm like, no, man, like, what is going on here? Like, please don't tell me this is him. Like, please just tell me this is a cop, you know, like, he's just checking out, you know, what was going on and, you know, like, please, you know. I walk up there and it's him. And he's like, see here, I told you the jewelry counter was still open. I just wanted to give you this before I left. So he gives me a diamond necklace Okay, and it's like, I don't know, it was like a $600 necklace. And I'm like, oh my gosh, right now, like, what are you doing? Like, this is not normal. And in someone's brain, that's not normal. And I'm trying to be polite, and I'm trying to be calm, and I'm trying not to fucking, like, judo chop this nigga in his fucking head, you know, <laughs> and run the other way. So I'm like, okay, thank you, now go. Now he leaves and I'm like, all right, I got this diamond necklace. I'm gonna call tomorrow and find out why he was so belligerent, what could have happened. You know, maybe he had a really bad day or, you know, something just wasn't right. Just something was not right. Well, come to find out, he actually had, um, after he left Walmart, um, he actually was in a hit and run, and um, in Florida, they don't play around with that shit, they, it's not a joke. Um, they do not play and with an alcohol level as high as his was, um, you know, it was, it was very, very pretty much idiotic as fuck to drive when you're that much intoxicated. So I'm reading this in the newspaper and I'm like, this is not my fault. You know, like some part of me felt bad. You know, and I had to tell myself, like, don't feel bad. Like, he was belligerent as fuck. Um, like, he was stalking you. Like, if this man could hit somebody and run, you know, like, there's something not okay. Now, this person ended up, you know, being in a coma for, I think, like, like, four months. So, you know, he got charged with, um... Uh, like involun involuntary manslaughter and um, you know like a couple other things but I'm not here to like tell anybody's business because all you have to do is look them up and look up the charges in this scenario and yeah we don't need that um, so I was just like oh my gosh like this man could have hit me when I was walking into Walmart this man could have tried luring me into his car and being as belligerent as he was, I could have been involved in that hit and run. Or I could have been 
killed, you know, because he's like, shit, like, I already hit one person, why not, you know, get away with murder and just haul ass? Um, well, actually, after this man had got arrested, I found out his full name, and I looked him up, and he was actually wanted for, um, um, rape and kidnapping, and, um, yeah, that was, uh, definitely, um, that was a wake-up call for me. That was a holy shit moment. Um, and he's being investigated in two other murders. Um, like, he is their prime suspect. So, I was really grateful that my instincts kicked in as a woman. And I read the situation properly. And I knew that something was not right. And that I needed to just stay away. So... Um, he ended up writing letters and letters and letters and letters. And, uh, so I never responded back to them. Um, he ended up trying to say that he was framed and all this other crazy stuff. And, um, you know, like I'm young, uh, I was just living my life and I didn't need to be involved in that. And... You know, I have plenty of other stories, but I think that this one took the cake. This one definitely took the cake. Like, you never know. You never know who somebody is. Like, you never know. And I could have been dead. I could have been buried and raped and... For all I know, with him being the prime suspect in these murder cases, I could have just been another girl raped and killed. Another one of his victims. For money? It was not worth it. It was not worth it. At all. It was not worth it. And I honestly... Um, For you guys that are out there and that have sugar daddies and that are on those websites and um, I heard some women do like Backpage and stuff like that, you really, really, really need to be on your, your A game. You need to pay attention and if you read the situation and it seems harming or threatening, get the fuck out. Like, run away as fast as you can because obviously you are seeing it the way you're supposed to and God is trying to tell you, like, leave, bitch, because you're going to die and I'm not ready for you up here yet, you know? So, I don't know. Um, the moral of this is pretty much have some respect for yourself. Try to read the scenario and the situation as much as you can. I actually have six new text messages from a sugar daddy from four and a half, five years ago. And I don't know if you can hear every time it goes, da ding, da ding, da ding. He has texted me 26 times today. 26 times. Now, I will not respond to that because I'm terrified. You know, that's crazy. You, you don't, you don't write somebody that many fucking times. I'm sorry. Now, just be precautious. And I really hope you guys heard all those dings because you know what? That is just really spooky as I'm telling this story and this man is just a ding, da ding, da ding, da ding, da ding, da ding. Holy shit right now. Oh my gosh. I'm glad I'm in a hotel because oh my God. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, shit. But, yeah. Um, money is the root of all evil. And I surely say that. Because it really the fuck is. Now, 
oh man, I got such a headache just from even thinking about this. And then with this person texting me and I'm like, oh, nope, ain't happening. Not doing it. Not fucking doing it. I'm not going to be a dead bitch. Nope. Nope. I'm not going to be a dead bitch. Not me. Fuck that. I'm good. I'm going to take this. And these are really good, by the way. And I'm going to eat my little rose. And probably a fun dip. And I'm going to call it a night. I'm not texting these crazy bastards back. Because I will always love to buy my rose. And to sit on my rose. Instead of being a fucking ditch. Bottom story. I like, I don't care. That's crazy as fuck. So please be safe out there. It's it's serious. It is serious. And now that's only one of my stories out of many. So you guys stay tuned. And I'm going to be making a new video every week. Um, now that I got my balls up. And sorry, I got to adjust the boobies. But, um, you know, now that I've gotten my balls up and I've pretty much let you guys know, you know, I've let you go like this into my life. So now I'm going to start doing this with you guys. Kind of like a blooming flower. So bear with me. Some of the stories are going to be really nuts. But I had to do this one first because... It is for sure, like, my phone died, but it is the icing on the cake, and I really hope that you guys enjoyed it, um, and really, stay safe out there. It is very serious, like, it's really serious. Please stay safe, and always be cautious who you're around. Now, I love you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in probably in a few days because I'm probably going to do a vlog in the next couple of days. But I love you. Do not forget to hit that, that subscribe button down below. And, you know, if this really helps it, you know, like I can do like this. And I could put like the subscribe button like right here. So subscribe. <laughs> Let me stop being ochre. Um, and I really hope that you guys maybe learn from my kind of like crazy moment. But um, I love you. Make sure to like and subscribe my shit. Like I've said a million times already because I'm awesome. And I know my makeup looks good because I'm just a fucking beauty guru, you know. My eyebrows are on leak what is it the flick of the fucking wrist or some shit i can't do it because i got a broken one but it's okay because i managed and they're still on top so yeah but i love you guys and i hope you have a great night stay safe and if you got a sugar daddy and he's not crazy take all of his money damn it bye